I'm going to talk a little bit about generating different drawing types from a single SketchUp model. Uh, you, in the Earlier I discussed how I keep a main SketchUp model of a home and then a separate one for the site which has the home referenced into it. Um, in order to keep the scene count down, you could probably capture every one of the drawings I'm showing out of a single model, but in order to keep the scene count down and make the drawing less complex, I do keep other SketchUp models, such as I keep a separate model for sections. Um, I also keep a separate model for reflected ceiling plans, and I keep a separate model for interior elevations. In all of these other models, the model is actually just a static reference of the main model, so I do no editing of the model in any of these files. They are set up solely for capturing different scenes. Otherwise, I would end up with, in my mind, too many scenes in a given model to make it manageable. As you can see here, this is one a file that's set up for interiors, so it captures every single interior of the home, where I capture all of the cabinetry, um, in the kitchen, showing the appliances in the cabinetry, in this case showing the island, uh, this is mudroom cabinetry, um, this is a ski house so there's actually a ski locker room as well, as you can see here, uh, where you see the two lockers and a bench, and then there's on the opposite wall, actually the ski lockers themselves. Uh, so there's a lot of drawings that this single file captures that I'd rather not try and capture out of one single file. Um, likewise on that, the reflected ceiling plan is actually the model brought in and mirrored about the z-axis so that you truly get a reflected ceiling plan of the home. Um, as opposed to just looking up at the ceiling so that it matches a classic drawing of a reflected ceiling plan. The other one is, of course, the section, and I love to do lots of sections because they're the most telling piece of information that you have uh, for a contractor. And here, actually, I will... I just noticed the section cuts are not actually shown. Um, and that was because I was using a similar method to how I create floor plans, is that I create line work within a given... Um, drawing model like the sections. If I go into working model you can see all the line work that's created to capture the line work that's overlaid on a specific drawing in layout. And so each one of these items, for instance I just clicked, you can see under its entity is a group and it's labeled as section G line work. And so that's the corresponding line work that goes to section G in my layout file. Um, again, you can set them up as individual views of line work. Uh, a lot of times for speed, I found it's just as fast, if not faster, for me to just copy and paste the line work into layout and at that point uh, just vector render it. Um, but that's really a preference thing in how it works. But you can see there's lots of information in here that's specific just to sections. So in this file, the only thing that I edit is the line work. I do not touch the model. I only update that reference whenever I edit the main model. Um, that goes for each one of those different drawing files. Now in layout, which I will open up the file, I will open up specifically the um, let's open up the sections while that's opening. Um, similar, one thing I didn't mention, similar to what I do in the floor plans, the same with the reflected ceiling plans, is I will create the line work here. If the line work is close enough and corresponds well enough to the floor plan, sometimes you can reuse that same line work you've generated in uh, sketch up for the floor plan directly onto here. Sometimes there's things I want to show that are a little different and you have to really evaluate each model individually as to whether that's what you need to do. But if you need to save time you can certainly reuse that line work. Um, on the interior elevations it's capturing every little piece so I do actually create some of that line work as well in the elevation, interior elevations to help define my bounding box. It's much easier than trying to redraw it in sketch in uh, layout. So now that we have the file open 
you know, it's telling me it's out of date because I've been doing some rendering work, so I've added a lot of information to the model that I'm not going to worry about for this explanation. And these are the finished actual construction documents of the sections. And so on each page of my layout page, going through, um, it's capturing each one of the individual scenes that I have in layout. And so then it, again, similar to what I do with the line work is that line work is brought in as a separate layer. Um, in this case, I label it as section line work, you can see. Right now I have it locked because typically I will keep the line work and the SketchUp model locked so that line work is carried in similar to the plans and overlaid on top. I do lock the layers for the sole purpose that occasionally if I'm double clicking to edit an element like this, it will take me into the SketchUp model, which just wastes time because then I have to back out of the SketchUp model. So by locking it, I don't have to worry about that and I can edit things like these uh, detail keys here very simply. Um, one of the tricks that we do, um, and this I've seen this on the boards as well, is how to mask certain parts of the model. And I use this process actually for not only sections, but it also happens to use the same process for um, elevations. Uh, this is a different project that I've opened up, but there are two layers that I create that are very specific to each one of the models. One of them is a grade line, which you can see is highlighted here. And the other one is a mask, which in this file is labeled as elevation mask. Again, it's locked so that I don't accidentally edit it, but I will unlock it so you can see what it does. It is actually line work where um, either you turn the outline in white or turn the outline off and you set the fill I'll show it up here under shape style. The fill is set to white. Here the stroke is set to white. You could actually set, shut the stroke off too, which is nice if you don't want to have any thickness to it. And then the mask is white and it, what it does is hide everything that I don't want to see below the model. And so I can pop it back into place. Then I create another line, which is the grade line. Um, Having using the lock feature is very important there because if you don't do that, sometimes it'll attach that new line to that feature. So I typically will draw the mask, lock that, and then draw a grade line over it, and then I don't have to worry about it connecting to the elevation mask. And then I set that to whatever thickness. I like the grade lines to be nice and bold. I use that same process on building sections. If I go into the layers, you can see there is section mask. Again, you can see it is locked, but if I take that mask and move it, you can see the rest of that section that I don't want to see. And I can move it back into place very easily. And again, do the same concept with a grade line that I do. I make sure that I have that layer, the section mask, locked so that when I draw, a line across that it doesn't connect to that layer. Use that for all different techniques. I use that for interior elevations, for sections, and for elevations primarily. Most of the other drawings I don't need to worry about because I'm looking down on them from above. Uh, but it's a very simple tool, very easy to utilize, um, and once you get used to how it works it goes very quickly in creating elevations. Um, you can see even on this project, which is not in full CD, which is more, a, um, it's a partial CD set at this point, this is used on every single one of the elevations. And where I live, we have a lot of sloped sites, so it becomes very useful.